So DeepSeek have surprised everyone again by open sourcing GPT-5 level models. Let's talk about it. So DeepSeek tweeted launching DeepSeek version 3.2 and DeepSeek version 3.2 Speciale reasoning first models built for agents. So what we can tell from this is that there are two models being released this time. And I think this further drives home the point that we're moving towards an agentic future. First, we've got DeepSeek version 3.2, a standard model now available on the live web app and the API. And then of course, we've got version 3.2 Speciale, which is pushing the boundaries of reasoning capabilities, which is API only for now. Meaning that if you're on the chat web user interface, you won't be able to interact with the model, maybe through a different API provider. Now, what's crazy about all of this before we get into the benchmarks is that once again, they've managed to open source this release. I don't think you guys understand how much a big deal this is. Like, I know that sentence didn't even make sense, but this is a huge deal. An open source release of a model that is GPT-5 or higher basically shows us that these models are starting to become more of a commodity. And somehow these Chinese companies are catching up to the Western counterparts oftentimes much quicker than we had anticipated. If you'd have asked me, I would have thought it would at least been one to two months before they would have caught up to these kinds of models. But it seems like once again, DeepSeek and other AI model providers have outdone themselves. But at a quick glance, what you should take away from this is that DeepSeek version 3.2 Speciale and DeepSeek version 3.2 Thinking are both models that perform remarkably well, at least in the ballpark of other models. Now, it does look like they're at the level of GPT-5 and Claude 4.5 Sonnet, but I've done a bit of digging and whilst on the surface things do look incredible, there are some things that are extraordinarily good and other things that aren't as good as you may think. So let's get into this because this is something that you could, you know, if you want to, you can pause and take a look at or even just screenshot it and share it around. Now, they compare the DeepSeek version 3.2 thinking and Speciale, those are two versions. Just think of the Speciale version as a version that thinks for a really, really long time. And we can literally see here the thinking tokens for each benchmark. Now, what's interesting about this is that we can see that DeepSeek, the standard one, and I'm going to refer to the standard one here, in most cases does actually live up to the level of GPT-5 high and at the level of Kimi K2 thinking, which is genuinely quite surprising. However, we do have to remember that the models that was recently released from OpenAI was actually GPT-5.1. So I do not know why they didn't compare this against GPT-5.1 and against some of the recent models like Opus 4.5. They did compare it to the recently released Gemini 3.0 Pro on which these, you know, benchmarks we can see, you know, one of the most impressive ones is Humanity's Last Exam, which is by far one of the most difficult benchmarks because you don't have any kind of data to prepare from it. It's basically just one of the exams that were essentially designed so that you couldn't really dominate it as easy as other benchmarks. You can see it achieves 25% and the Speciale version achieves a 30% which is rather impressive. Now, other notable improvements and really impressive stuff is the code forces with a Speciale outperforms GPT-5 high, which is of course the mode of GPT-5 model that thinks for a long time. And of course the live code bench, which once again, where it seems to dominate. Now, of course, I'm not just gonna be a benchmark fanatic. I have to be honest with you guys, oftentimes, benchmark don't always live up to real world, not necessarily capabilities, but real world usability. And remember that DeepSeek version 3.2 Speciale is only available in the API because I'm probably betting that the costs right now to run the model are considerably higher than you might think, considering that the model tends to think for quite some time. Now, before we continue this video, if you're watching this video, you're clearly interested in AI, but there's a difference between watching AI content and actually learning how to use it. AI was one of the most in-demand skills of 2025, according to the World Economic Forum, yet most people still haven't properly learned it. And that somewhat puts you at risk, not just of falling behind, but being replaced by someone who did. That's why I want to tell you guys about the two-day AI Live Mastermind by Outskill, the world's first AI-focused educational platform happening this Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time on both days. They've got their year-end sale running right now, so you can get in completely free instead of the usual $395. Over 10 million professionals across marketing, finance, engineering, and data have gone through this 16-hour live training from AI experts at Microsoft and NVIDIA. You'll learn how to use AI to simplify your daily tasks build AI agents that automate your workflows, design automations connecting tools like Sheets, Notion, and CRMs, and walk away with ready-to-use AI systems for your job or business. But the real value is learning how to monetize those skills, and outskill learners have launched AI businesses that are actually generating profits. 
You'll also get $5,000 worth of free bonuses, including a prompt Bible, an AI monetization roadmap, and a personalized toolkit builder if you attend both days. Seats are limited, links in the description so you can grab your now. Now, once again, if we look at the other model performance benchmarks, we can see here a little bit more clearly where the model starts to land on these other benchmarks like Terminal Bench and SWE Resolved. So if you're wondering, does this model actually replace my Coda, the Claude Sonnet 4.5 or Claude Opus 4.5? It doesn't do that just yet. However, it still is a good enough model, to be honest with you guys, to the point where considering the pricing of the model, which I will get into later, I think relatively for what you're getting, it's a good price to performance ratio. That is certainly true. And I'm not gonna take the speciality values at face here just because I know that they're not gonna be available for the average user. So it's best to take the DeepSeek version 3.2 thinking. Although it does go to show that with high inference, you can get incredible performance. But overall, we can see that when we do take a look at things here, Gemini seems to still edge out and still maintain its number one spot. Now, I did see a tweet from someone that was like, okay, but where the hell is Opus 4.5? And that's what I was wondering. Where is the comparison to the recent model? So I decided to actually get the values of Opus 4.5 and input them here. And here we can see that there are some areas where it's not really comparable, but compared to Opus 4.5, we can see that the SWE verified bench, it doesn't come close to that one. And for the other things like Terminal Bench and Amy 2025, we can still see that Claude Opus 4.5 Gemini Pro still managed to edge out the model. Now, it's pretty crazy because these things happened so quickly that, you know, if DeepSeek was released maybe one to two weeks earlier, this would have probably been an incredible announcement. This doesn't mean that the model is bad by any means necessary. It just means that in certain areas, in terms of, you know, having to switch the model, I think currently, whilst yes, this is not only open source and impressive, other models still dominate in their respective areas, whereas Opus dominates in coding and Gemini in general reasoning. But I think this is most certainly why, you know, OpenAI has raised a red flag because DeepSeek version 3.2 thinking seems to be right behind GPT-5 high, which is definitely really surprising. I mean, I'm not sure about you guys, but when we actually do look at some of the values there on the bottom area, like Tour de Catalan, Terminal Bench 2, Pass at 1, and Terminal Bench 2, those values are the exact same down to the decimal point. So I'm not entirely sure those are 100% accurate, but it is a bit weird that four of them are the exact same. That's just me maybe being a bit investigative. Now, I think the real juicy stuff was in the research paper. And before you guys click off the video, I'm going to keep this explanation as simple as possible so you can understand exactly why DeepSeek is able to do what it does and how it's able to perform as efficiently and effectively as it is. So one of the things they talk about is, of course, making the model more efficient. And I did just show you guys a price comparison, but we'll get to that in a moment. So, so if we look at the efficiency between DeepSeek version 3.1, which is the previous model, and DeepSeek version 3.2, we can see that the blue line is the old model, which is where it gets more and more expensive the longer your prompt is. And the orange line is the new model, where it barely gets more expensive at all, even with 128k token inputs. In short, meaning that DeepSeek version 3.2 can handle massive context for a fraction of the cost because it looks at only the important information instead of scanning everything, which I think is once again incredible. If you can increase the capability of a model and reduce the price of that model, you're going to get some super efficient price metrics, which is where we get into the price comparison. I found this tweet online. I'll leave a link to it in the description, but someone was doing a write-up of DeepSeek and they actually managed to find that the DeepSeek version 3.2 is actually insanely cheap from their APA pricing page compared to other Frontier models and even the low cost variant of GPT-5 mini. This means that DeepSeek is dramatically cheaper than comparable Frontier models, which means that if their pricing is so competitive, once again, the industry is going to have to react to this because if people do start to switch to open source models like DeepSeek or even start to run models themselves, model providers are gonna find themselves in a really tricky position. Now, of course, for Frontier models and you know companies like Google, OpenAI, and Anthropic, they may not have that issue, but as those margins in those areas get worn down, some individuals may just choose to run their own systems, and that's gonna really shake things up. This is where, you know, of course they say, intelligence too cheap to meter. Now, this is something that looks a little bit com complicated, but I promise you guys, it's only gonna take two minutes for me to explain this, and essentially, this is one of the things that changed the game. So in normal transformers, every token or word looks at every other token to decide what matters. So if you've got like a hundred 
thousand tokens each one compares itself with a hundred others and that's like before i answer let me check the entire history of everything we've ever said so far it works okay it works for transformers but it's slow and it scales badly so deep seek built this deep seek sparse attention thing and the dsa essentially what it does instead of looking at every past token each token just uses a new thing called a lightning indexer think of this as just a tiny fast relevance detector and all it does is that it quickly scans all previous tokens and it scores each token on how relevant it might be and it only picks the top k most relevant ones which are the important tokens and then the model runs attention only on those selected tokens meaning that it doesn't check every single word it basically only focuses on the useful context and this is important because in even a real conversation not every word matters and when solving a problem you only need the definitions the key steps the important numbers, the main logic, and DSA basically teaches the model to notice those. And so this makes the model a lot more efficient. And this is, of course, the key that DeepSeek is able to do. They're able to make models efficient, and you can see this lightning indexer, that is how it was able to do that. Now, another thing to know about this model is that, like I said, once again, we're moving towards agentic models. So this is where we got the thinking tool use, which is where it can use tools, take multiple steps, reason internally, and combine thinking and tool use in a way that previous models couldn't. And this is a major shift from LLMs that answer questions to LLMs that do tasks. So previously, models could either think or they could use tools, but not both at the same time. And, you know, only recently we started to see models do that. And now we've got DeepSeek version 3.2, which is one of the first models that's being able to think while using the tools. And it's keep, you know, it's keeping on the reasoning between those tools tool so it's able to solve multi-step tasks like an actual agent and it's able to use tools in thinking mode and regular mode so the benchmarks that you're seeing here are the i guess you could say agentic benchmarks t2 benchmark is the multi-step reasoning and tool use the mcp universe is real world tool environments mcp mark is browser and search tasks and tool decathlon is a variety of multi-step agent challenges now across these gemini is still number one claude 4.5 sonnet is still strong and gpt4 and GPT-5 is, you know, pretty competitive. Now, DeepSeek is surprisingly does very well, and it's often ahead of Kimi K2 and Mini Max. So they're basically saying, look, we're the strongest open source model, which is essentially closing the gap with closed source models. Now, of course, of course, I couldn't leave this out. This is probably the craziest bit, and I probably shouldn't have left this till last, but this is the craziest announcement because this is not even something that every you know model can do the international mathematical olympiad is the highest level global math competition for humans the smartest teenagers in the world compete here and deep seek managed to score 35 out of 42 points which is gold medal territory for a human competitor so deep seek didn't just do okay it solved the math olympiad problems at the level of world-class human prodigies now you've also got the cmo 2025 which is the china mathematical olympiad and this is even harder than imo in many ways China's Mathematical Olympiad is famous for brutal difficulty, and DeepSeek scored a 102 out of 126, enough for another gold medal. And this shows that the model isn't just good at Western-style math problems, it handles extremely abstract rigor proofs too. Now also, we've got the International Olympiad in Informatics, and this is the World Championship for High School Competitive Programming, and DeepSeek scored 492 out of 600, another gold-level performance, enough to place 10th in the entire world if it were a human competitor, meaning that the model can design algorithms, code them, and optimize them at near elite human level. ICPC World Finals 2025 University Level Programming. And this is the hardest team programming competition on the planet, University World Finals. And the tables show how many attempts it took to solve each problem, and it successfully solved 10 out of 12 problems. That's gold medal level, ranking second in the world. We need to really take that in because this is insane an open source model is now gold medal performance the ai plays second in a global university programming championship this is the kind won by mit stanford and elite russian teams and deep seek model is right up there now it is important to note that whilst this was achieved with the speciale model the model is really good but it's very token inefficient it produce it produces basically these huge chain of thought traces which is sometimes you know 30,000 to 70,000 tokens to reach that gold medal performance and deep seek does admit in the paper that this is a weakness against the gemini 3 pro models which are more efficient so do bear that in mind that if you're going to use these models especially the speciality model through an api provider whilst on paper it might be cheaper some questions because those thinking tokens continue going on and on and on they might actually be a little bit more expensive compared to the efficient level reasoning you get from other you know closed source models 
like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Gemini. But with that being said, I still think this is a crazy announcement. It's completely open source. You can download it. You can use it. And let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys in the next one.